Hello! In this video, I am going to show you how to prepare your clay positive for sculpting. Chances are if you used a press mold, you will have a little cleanup to do. So I have a small amount of plastic clay because I might need to fill in some cracks and gaps. But the first thing that I'm going to do is actually remove any plaster that might have come from the press mold onto my clay. So if it's large chunks, you can use your needle tool. If it's small chunks, you can use your loop tool. The more pressings that you make in the mold, the less plaster that you'll end up with in your clay. So I also um, clean up the edges of my mold before I start carving in any detail because I might have to pick it up and flip it over. And if I've spent hours detailing something and then I turn it over, I might smoosh that detail in my hand. So I'm using some of my standard wooden clay tools. I'm also showing you, you can use a pencil, um, you can use your fingers, just use what sort of makes the most sense for you. What I'm trying to do is make sure I don't have any sharp edges around the base of the sculpture. I will also at some point take just a little bit of water on a sponge and soften up those edges so they are not sharp. When this clay gets fired in the kiln, those edges will become um, very hardened and, and they can cut. Um, and if they're too thin, they could also break. This is also a good time to write your name on your piece. And if you're firing it in your own studio, you might not have to write it as large, but I'm, I'm going to be firing this in a classroom kiln where lots of other work will be. So I wanna make sure that this is very easy to find amongst all the other pieces. Okay, once I feel like I have um, all of the plaster out of the clay and I've cleaned up the edges and the back of the piece, I'm going to start filling in the cracks that are visible. And these cracks were um, created through the action of pressing smaller chunks of clay into the mold because the face was a little more dynamic. If you put one solid piece of clay in, you won't have these seams to repair. But as you can see, it's actually fairly quick and simple to take care of. So what I do is I make little stitches across the seam and then smooth them over with the back of my tool. So I just use the tip of that tool to make little X's and then smooth them over. This is a shorter, um, I'm sorry, not as deep of a crack. And so just a tool that has some serrated edge teeth on it could also work good for that. You can use the same tool for all of these cracks or different tools depending on how deep the crack is. But the action is all the same. It's basically making X's and little cross marks over the clay. What we're trying to do is get clay to move from one side of the crack to the other side of the crack so that they're interlocking with one another. So it's not just a superficial fix, it's actually blending those areas of clay together and that will make them stronger. So up on the left I have a slightly deeper crack and if I tried to just move the clay back and forth over that I'd end up with a little divot. So what I'm going to do is fill in this and I'm actually compressing the clay a little bit more to make more of a kind of crater and then I will go ahead and take a paintbrush. You could also take a sponge. And I'm going to add slip to this. Now you can either use slip you've made out of clay and water. I'm just taking water out of my container and really rubbing it into the clay to make a kind of sticky glue-like surface. You can't just brush water on and then call it good. You do have to rub it into the surface to build up a slippery area. And then I'm going to score the surface. So you can use a fork, a needle tool, a scoring specific tool, but anything that really is just cutting up and um, tearing into the clay a little bit. Now I'm going to take some of that fresh clay out of the um, bag that I had set aside at the beginning. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this. 
and score that in order to press it into the clay. And I should also remind you that this mold that I'm working with, or this pressing, um, I pressed the clay into the mold when it was plastic, and then I uncovered it for about an hour before recovering it to get it to what I consider the leather soft stage. So when I push this clay into it here, this little patch, it's not collapsing the clay and compressing it even further. The clay has a little bit of um, stability to it, but it's still able to um, be manipulated. So that's the leather soft stage. Again, for me it was one hour, but it all depends on how much moisture is in the clay, the temperature of the room, the humidity in the room, how well it was covered to begin with. Um, so you just really kind of have to babysit and you learn about these different stages through the process of making. So I filled in that using that same scoring and slipping and compressing technique and now that hole is filled in. When I have um, cracks around areas where they require a little bit more detail such as an eye or a mouth, you'll see I'll use smaller tools. I use the needle tool to create the cross hatching and now I'm using my little popsicle stick. It doesn't have the rounded edge so I'm using the back of my finger using that fingernail because it um, has a little bit more shape for controlling the contours. Again, I could just get away with the popsicle stick for a little crack in the cheek. Serrated edge tools are fantastic for thin cracks. And if you have any high points on your clay, you can also scrape those back. So you can see right at the left side of my lip there, there was a flaw in my mold, a little um, air pocket, and it filled in with clay, and I just scraped it away. So I don't want to change the shape of my lips too much. That's the advantage of working with a mold, is that I have a lot of the facial features already built in, so I'm just being extra careful to not um, shift the clay around too much. And so you can see how I'm just, this is at normal speed, just going slow and steady. And I'm compressing and shifting and moving the clay to help repair those cracks. The next time I go to press this mold, I could just be a little bit more conscious of what I'm putting for clay around the lips so I don't end up with any seams right above my upper lip. So the clay is starting to feel a little stiff getting closer to leather hard versus leather soft, and I still want to work on this um, much more for detail. So you can see that I'm taking a sponge and adding just a little bit of water to the surface. You could also do this with a spray bottle if you had one available. I don't want to add too much water so that it softens up the clay too much and I can't come back to carve in detail, but I don't want it to get too far beyond the leather hard state so that I can't carve. Um, at this stage, you could decide that you want to take a break and you can cover it really well in plastic to come back to another time, or you could continue on with sculpting details into the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Just continue to watch the um, stage of the clay as you're working around. Sometimes I will cover the bottom half of the face while I work on the top half and vice versa. But now your clay positive should be ready for sculpting back into the form.